Do you want to create a realistic looking horror game? Well, in this course, we will be making a realistic horror game from the beginning in Unreal Engine 5. I will show you how to open the project and create a project and show you how to make all of the mechanics for a good and realistic horror game. And this will become a series, so this is part 1, where we will be making the movement and make the player feel smooth and the sprinting. And this is targeted for beginners, so if you don't have any knowledge of Unreal Engine 5, this will be a good fit for you. But of course, you can always be uh, good at Unreal Engine, you can watch as well, because we will learn a lot of things in this uh, series. So, if you already know Unreal Engine 5 and want to create a horror game, you can still watch. I will just be explaining things much deeper than uh, normally. So, let's start. Okay, so first of all, we want to of course open up Unreal Engine, and then once you open up Unreal Engine, you will come to this tab right here. Now in here, you can choose whatever game you want to create. So this is a template for every game. So we got first person, third person, top down, and AR, and virtual reality, and a vehicle project. But we are making a horror game, so I will choose the first person template, because it is the easiest one, and it's the... Uh, one that actually fits the project that we are making right now. So then down here you can choose the project name and I will just call this horror game tutorial like that. Then you can also take the quality preset but you can change this later in the game and you can take the start content that we want to be on and the ray tracing if you want that as well. Once you've done this we can just create a project, we can just create. So now, once we're in the project, you can see that we can move around and uh, other things. And I guess you probably already know that, but you know, it's a beginner tutorial. So what I want to do first is to delete the this one, uh, the game start right here, or the player start. So just delete that one. And that is where the player will uh, be, so if you play the game over here, the player will spawn right here. But we don't want that. Right now at least. Then we can just delete this gun, because we don't need it. So just delete that. And then, if we try to play, you can see that this is how the first person template looks like. And we will change some simple things to make it more realistic in a quick and simple way. So, what we do is that we can just close out of here. And then we have all of these folders down here. So, we just want to open up the first person folder. Because in here we have all of the first person blueprints. So, click on the first person folder. Then, we want to go into the blueprint. And then, go into the BP first person character. And this is the character that we are playing as right now. So, if I change something in here, the character as we are playing as will also have that change because we are playing as this character right here. Okay, so once we're in here, we want to go to viewport like this. And then I want to delete the arms. So I'll just select the mesh right here, so the arms, and then we can just delete those. Then I also want to select the capsule, so this one right here. And this is the collision for the player. And as you can see, the collision right now is pretty big. And if you want your player to be fat, you can have it like this. But it's much better to uh, change the capsule radius to something smaller, so, so that the player can actually walk up to something and stand really close to it. So we'll just change the capsule radius right here to about, let's say, 30. And that looks very good. So we can just compile a save. And then, what we want to do is that we want to add a spring arm to the camera. And why we're doing that is because right now the camera is very sharp when you look around. And if we want to create a realistic horror game, we want the camera to be smoother when we look around. So, how we do that is that we will just select the camera, go to add, and to add a spring arm right here. And then just click on enter. And then, instead of the spring arm being attached to the camera, we want the camera to be attached to the spring arm. So, what we do is that we want to select the spring arm, and then we want to drag it onto the camera. 
So now it isn't attached to anything. So then we just want to click on the camera and drag it on to the spring arm. And now, as you can see, the first picture camera is attached to the spring arm. So now we want to select the spring arm. As you can see, it is uh, very long right now. And that is because the target arm length is at 300. So we'll just change this value to zero. And now, as you can see, the camera is back at its original position. Then we also want to uh, deselect the do collision text. So let's set that to false. So just tick that box off. And then we also want to tick this uh, box on use pawn control rotation because we want the spring arm to control the camera and not the camera controlling the spring arm. So once we've done that, we can just go to the first picture camera. So just select that. And then we want to set the use pawn control rotation on the camera to false, like that. Now the spring arm is controlling the camera. So once we've done that, we want to select the spring arm again. Then if we scroll down to lag right here, we can enable the camera lag and the camera rotation lag. And the camera lag is when you walk. So right now when you walk, it is very sharp. So when you walk, uh, it is just straight walking and no smooth, uh, no smoothness at all. So we want to uh, tick the enable camera lag to on. And the value can be set to 10 because it is very smooth and uh, realistic. And then the enable camera rotation lag is when you look around. So we can just select that. And now if we just compile and save and try that out, you can see that the camera is much smoother and also the walking. But I think that the camera rotation lag is uh, a bit too slow. So I'll just change its value to about 25. But you can of course mess around with these values to get it just how you want it. So that is very good for me. So let's test this out. So just play. Yeah, this is very nice. But as you can see now, the character is very very fast and we also can't sprint. And when making a horror game, we want the player to actually be slow and that you can actually sprint as well. So let's make the sprint functionality and also that the player walks slower. So how do we do that? Well it's pretty easy. So just go into the BP first push character again. And then what we want to do is that we want to select the character movement. And this is what the character uh, movement is like. So when we change values in here, that will affect the character movement. Of course, because it says right here, character movement. So just select that and then if we sort of scroll down and here is max walk speed. So whatever value this is, uh, is how the fast player will walk. So 600 as you saw is very fast. So I will say that 150 will be a good walking uh, speed. So let's try 150 uh, right now. So now if we walk. You see that the player is walking very slow, which fits for a horror game. But if you want it to be even slower, you can just change the value to about 120 to make the player even slower. So now when the player is walking and we hold down left shift, we can't sprint. And sprinting is very important in a horror game because it will make the player more tense and you know sprinting is a very important thing in every video game. So how do we create sprinting? Well it's pretty simple. So just go into the BP first person character. Then after we have done all this we want to go into the event graph. And inside of the event graph we can see that we have all of the codes right here that Unreal Engine actually gave us in this template. So we got the movement input, the jump input and the camera input. So these things we don't want to mess around with. So in the event graph we can actually code a bunch of things that will affect the character. 
So in here, we will do all of the coding for the character as we are playing as. So, how do we make ourselves a sprint? Well, it's pretty easy. So, what we do first is I want to go to edit up here. Then we want to go to project settings. And we want to scroll down till we see input right here. Then we want to add a action mapping. And we'll just drop this down. And we'll call this sprinting. But you can call this whatever you want. So maybe running or something. But sprinting will work fine for me. And then we want to drop this down. And we can actually set the key to what the sprinting will be. So I usually sprint with the left shift key. So I'll just search that up. Left shift right here. And you can add how many uh, keys you want to be sprinting with. So maybe if you want to implement a controller to your game as well, you can just go over here and search for that controller. So gamepad and just, just choose whichever uh, sprinting button you want for the controller as well. But in this tutorial, we will not be implementing a controller. So we'll just delete this. Now, once we've done that, we can just close out of here. So, back in here, we want to right click, then we want to search for the input we just created. So I called mine sprinting, and as you can see, we have the input, action event, and this sprinting event right here, that we just made. So we'll just select this, and as you can see, we have the input action right here. And then, when we release, we want the, the player to walk normally. And then, when we release the sprinting key, we want the player to uh, walk in the normal uh, state. So, how do we do this? First of all, we want to drag out the character movement. And now, we have a reference to the character movement right here. So, out of here, we want to set max walk speed. And the max walk speed, you can see that the max walk speed is right here in the character movement. So we are dynamically changing this value when we are uh, sprinting. And that's why we need a reference to the character movement so it actually knows what to change in the uh, movement as aspect. So we will just uh, duplicate this. So control C, control V. And then the target will be the character movement as well. And then of the pressed when we are sprinting. And then of the pressed of the input action, we we'll drag that in to this set max walk speed right here. Then released, we'll go into this one right there. So when we are sprinting, we want the max walk speed to be about double that the walk speed is. So the sprinting speed will be about, let's say, 300. And then, when we release the sprinting key, we want the player to walk in the normal value again. So, how do we see our normal max walk speed? Well, if we click on the character movement, we can see that the max walk speed normally is 120, because we set the value to that earlier. So, just set the max walk speed in here to the max walk speed in your character movement. So it is the original uh, speed. So we'll just set this to 120. And now the sprinting is all done. Yes, simple as that. So now if you just compile and save, we can click on play. And now once I walk, you can see that we are walking. Then if I hold down left shift, you can see that we are sprinting. And you can and you can change of these values if you want. And this will become a series, so the more episodes we make, the uh, more scary it will get. And more like a horror game it will get. So make sure to subscribe to don't miss the episodes and don't forget to join the Discord as well, we have a very big community over there, and I love you guys, uh, who are supporting me and everything, so thank you all. And I hope that, uh, yeah, you have a good day. And in the next part, we will be making post-process effects and those kind of things to make it actually look like a horror game and not only feel like one.
so yeah thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one